So good morning to you, and I want to thank you all for taking the time out of your busy work day or retired day or whatever day it is to come to be with us to at our BLT, our Business and Leaders Luncheon or Business and Leaders Talks, so that it's a BLT. So anyway, thank you very much. I want to um, introduce myself and then some of our sponsors. I'm Lynn Snodgrass. I'm the CEO of the Best Darn Chamber in the Pacific Northwest, and I love my job. Today is officially my fourth year. So I just, thank you. My husband is surprised that I stuck with it this long it's because I used to work for him. And so he thought, oh, she'll get tired of that thing and then come back and work for me. No. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank our presenting sponsors, Portland General Electric. Dean Funk is here, his mouthful of salmon. Thank you very much, Dean. And please tell everyone at PGE how much we appreciate them. And sitting next to him is Sherry Henson, who's representing Columbia Bank. Is your mouth full? No, your mouth is not full. Thank you very much, Columbia Bank. Um, I also want to thank Gresham Barlow School District. Dr. Pereira was here, but she had an emergency back at the ranch, and so she had to leave. But let's thank Gresham Barlow School District as well. And we couldn't do this without it being um, on the TV screen all the time, Metro East Community Media. Thank you, Keith, for being there, for being here. And let's not forget the replay schedule is out on the counter as you leave. Be sure and get a replay schedule so that you can listen to it again because it's going to be a very interesting topic. I want to uh, recognize some of our elected officials that happen to be here today. Councillor Widmark, where did you end up? Councillor, hi, thank you for being here. <clears throat> did you come to listen about air, airlines or baseball or the salmon for lunch? Was there anything, any expectation? All of the above? Okay. And Councillor Eccles is here as well. Councillor, thank you. I'm going to introduce her again because she is a board member of the Gresham Chamber. So Councillor Eccles, thank you very much for being a board member. Applause, applause, applause. Thank you. Sue Piaz is here and she's the past president of our chamber board. Thank you, Sue. Bucket list travel tours. Mike Schofield, the money bags of Gresham Barlow School District. He is <laughs> He's a board member. And Lori Harrell from Lodging Management and Comfort Inn. Lori, where are you? Hi, Lori. Thanks for being here. Matt Miller, Gresham Sanitary. Matt. Hi, Matt. Do you have a birthday coming up? No. No? Okay. I keep waiting for you to age, so there's, there's always that. Thank you, Matt, for being a board member. And I'm going to introduce again Dean Funk from PGE because he also is a board member. Dean, you get a second applaud today. I know. How about that? You got one last, last month when you weren't here, just so you know. Okay. So they applaud you whether you're here or not. Does that tell you anything? Yeah, there you go. So today we have a wonderful speaker and it's a great topic and he's going to talk for an hour and a half unless I cut him off at an hour. But in order to introduce him, I'm going to introduce our board member and chair of the Government Affairs Council, Warner Allen of Warren Allen LLC, and he's going to introduce our speaker today. Warner, applause, applause, applause. Thank you. Oh, it's still morning. Good morning. Um, so as, as some of you probably know, um, the Oregon legislature in 1891 created or established the Port of Portland. And the port today owns three airports, Portland International, Hillsborough, and Troutdale, four marine terminals, and five industrial parks. So the mission of the port is to enhance the region's economy and quality of life by providing efficient cargo and air passenger access to national and global markets and by promoting industrial development. Our speaker today is the Community Affairs Outreach Manager for the Port of Portland, Jason Chanafelt. He's been with the port since 2012 and is responsible for managing the speakers program for the port 
educational outreach and tour programs, as well as fostering relationships with communities like Gresham that are impacted so much by the port. In his off hours, Jason moonlights as an actor. He's a founding member of the Clackamas Repertory Theater and has performed in more than 30 productions. Over the years, Jason has played the straight man, the comic relief, the romantic lead, uh, the villain, of course, the lady, the idiot, and even Russian number two. <laughs> Which will you be today, Jason? <laughs> so, a graduate of Portland State University, please welcome to our stage, Jason Shenefeld. Well, how are you today? Good. Uh, thanks for having me out. Um, I'm excited to share with you some um, developments coming our way at PDX. Um, we could have uh, be we could be talking about anything today, but I wanted to share with you um, some things to expect coming our way. You may be aware that PDX won Best Airport in America for the sixth consecutive year last year. Uh, we're going for seven. I haven't, I haven't heard on that yet. Um, so today we're going to talk about our PDX Next program and uh, talk about some challenges coming our way and then open that up for questions. That sound good? Yeah? Okay, great. Uh, how many of you have flown out or picked someone up from the airport within the last few months? A lot of people. All right. How many of you noticed construction? All right. What did you notice? Wow. <laughs> what kind of construction? Parking area. Okay. Terminal. E. Okay. Anything else? The turnaround has changed, yes, good. So we'll, we'll talk about all those things. So uh, we have about five major projects going on right now and an investment of about $2 billion that will take place over the next six years or so. So there are a lot of changes coming our way. And our main goal really is to deliver an experience for travelers that is comfortable, convenient, and uniquely PDX, not just now, but looking forward into the future. So uh, people ask, why change the airport we love? Now, a few of you may have heard this presentation at Gresham Rotary. So if you did, I would say keep, keep this to yourself, because I want to hear from the rest of you that don't know. Anyone wanted to take a guess how many passengers we had last year? Not everybody at once. I know you're excited to play this game. 12 million. Higher. 20. <laughs> good, good work. <laughs> so we didn't quite crack this yet. Last year we did about 19.8 million passengers. We're almost at 20. Um, and I say this and it really doesn't mean anything. So uh, at least yet. So to give this some context, there's about 30 large airports in the United States. And to be a large airport, you have to handle at least 1% of the total employments domestically. That means people gain on planes. So out of the large airports in the United States, ranked 1 to 30, where do you think PDX falls? How are we ranked? Not three, not eight, not 10. Keep going down. 30. We are the smallest of the largest. SeaTac last year did about 50 million passengers. They're ranked about eight. Anyone know who ranks number one in terms of passenger traffic, both in this country and internationally? Atlanta, you're exactly right. Last year, any guesses how many they did last year? 75, 80, 107 million. Yeah, good job. So uh, that gives you a little bit of context. We're not there yet, but we still are a large airport. And the terminal as we know it today, 
uh, was created in the 50s, the main terminal, and it was built to accommodate about half that amount. So we are in need of more, a more flexible space, more space in general, and to be able to accommodate changes in uh, technology and the way people travel. So why change the airport we love? We've got 20 million different reasons to do that. Uh, here's what you can expect. Here's some of the projects coming on. You've seen this construction going on when you drive down Airport Way to the terminal. This is the extension of E. We are adding six new gates. Southwest is going to have a new home in E uh, starting next summer. Um, and I like to tell people I get a sick enjoyment out of this because Southwest is currently located in the southwest corner of the airport and they're moving to the northeast, which I think is hilarious. Um, so you'll notice from this rendering there are a lot of huge windows that let in a lot of natural light. That's the outside. Let's look at the inside. By the way, has anyone seen this image before? If you, if you go to the end of E now, this, you'll see this take up the, that, that wall. It's really the rendering of uh, what it's going to look like. And I've even heard people on the internet have gotten upset at this rendering we've created because they see those bathrooms right here and they're like, oh, I'll just go to the bathroom down there. And then they realize this is a wall. Uh, <laughs> So um, when this opens next summer, there's going to be more places to sit, eat, shop, rate. We're going to have about six new shops and restaurants, all with a local feel, all maintaining the street pricing people have come to love and enjoy. There's going to be faster Wi-Fi. We've recognized that people are bringing many more devices that are connected, not just their phones, but their tablets, their Nintendo Switches. So we need to accommodate for that. There's going to be more places to plug in. Um, it's going to be more open, more spacious, but probably the coolest part here is down at the end here, this is going to be one big window. And on a clear day, it's going to frame Mount Hood nicely. So um, obviously, the caveat there is a clear day. Um, so uh, it's important when we, when we have these projects that we are maintaining that local feel. So that's the north side of what's going on at the airport that you've all seen. What about the south side? How many of you have flown out of Concourse A? A few of you. How many of you enjoyed it? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> all right. Well, the good news is that next fall, we are saying goodbye to A. So sh not very long from now, A is going bye-bye forever. Or as our executive director, Chris Robinhold, likes to say, you're going to be able to kiss your A goodbye. Um, <laughs> when that goes away this fall, by the way, I, I, I will say that Concourse A was built in 1987, and it was created as a temporary structure. It wasn't meant to last as long as it has. So when that goes away, we are going to also close down temporarily Concourse B. We're going to close down B. We are going to move customers that fly out of A to the end of C temporarily for about 16 months, which means that if you normally fly out of A, you have to leave yourself a little bit more time to get to the end of C, but there's a lot more shops, more options down there. And then... In the winter of 2021, we are going to say hello to a brand new Concourse B, and this is what it's going to look like. So this is going to be expanded about 300 feet. There's going to be new shops, new restaurants. Again, you're noticing a lot more natural light coming in. Uh, interesting anecdote, I uh, went to a marketing uh, meeting probably last month, and we were talking about different signage throughout the airport. And the uh, corporate communications team had taken pictures of the different concourses, all throughout Concourse C, all through Co Concourse B, all through Concourse A, and they put them up on a wall. And what was interesting was none of these pictures had been al altered, uh, but you could see the pictures from, a, from C were nice and bright, B it was a little bit darker, and A looked like a dungeon. Um, <laughs> So all of this is about creating a better experience 
for our Horizon customers. Right now, our Horizon customers aren't experiencing the best airport in America. Um, so this will um, definitely be a benefit for them when that opens up. Winter 2021. We're also working on a project to get people in and out of PDX faster. Some of you mentioned you saw construction uh, in the parking area. We are building a brand new parking structure, which will add 2,400 additional parking spaces long term. Um, it will also bring all the off-site parking for rental cars in. The benefit for that is for travelers coming in, they don't have to get on a shuttle to go get their car. I travel to Phoenix often to see family. And it's a bummer once you get off your plane to be like, okay, now I have to get on another shuttle to get my car. This eliminates all of that. It, we're also creating a dedicated area for ride, uh, ride share, so Uber and Lyft. Um, when I give these presentations, people say, a lot of congestion right now when you try and get to the terminal building. What are you doing for that? Well, some of that congestion is actually because of the advent of rideshare. And so creating a dedicated area out of the way uh, will help alleviate some of that congestion. Uh, so we expect this to open in the 2021-2023 range. Okay, so we talked about the E extension. We talked about A going away. We talked about the B renovation. Uh, we talked, it sounds like alphabet soup. Uh, we talked about the parking structure. Now the next picture I'm going to show you is pretty exciting. It just made it into the slide deck. It is the, uh, one of the images of what we think the main terminal will look like when you walk in the front door. So you are getting a sneak, sneak peek here. So we are creating a new main terminal. Um, again, to modernize it, to allow for more flexibility, now, what's different about this project uh, compared to the other projects is that there's a few more challenges related to this project. Um, but before I get into that, one question that keeps coming up is, how are you going to keep the heart and soul of PDX? Often, if you fly into other airports, it feels like you could be in any airport in America. So I usually like to stop here and ask uh, groups like yourself, um, you know, that award that we got, Best Airport in America, do you agree with that? You don't have to say yes, but I'm curious, if you do, why do you agree with it? Dining. Dining. Be more specific. What do you mean? Um, more options and better Right. And we try and focus more on local shops, so you're getting that feel as well. Okay, good. So dining options. Uh -huh. Yeah. It, 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 all, it always has a feeling of space, mm -hmm. even though it may be busy. And, and I think the car is so if you know what I mean. But, right. Right, or 55,000, yeah. Uh, I love the live music throughout. Mm. It's really nice. It's a nice touch, and I have not seen that, I don't think, in other airports. Yeah. Hollywood Theater. Hollywood Theater, yeah. right, or micro cinema. Yeah, good. I'm always um, impressed by how clean and light everything is mm -hmm. uh, compared to other airports that I've seen. It's clean. Yeah. The little green and red lights in the parking structure. Nobody anywhere does that. Right. And everybody, every time we pick somebody up and they see that, they're like, oh my God, why don't we have this at our airport? <laughs> right. So the lights that show you whether a parking space is taken or not, um, that also is an environmental feature apart from a convenience feature. Um, it's also part of the reason why we, um, when you pay for parking, you actually go to a kiosk before you get to your car. Uh, we're helping reduce people sitting in their car or waiting to pay for something. Um, why do that when you have to hit that anyway? Yeah, good. Anything else that stands out? Yes.
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I work out at the airport, and um, often when I take a break, I'll walk walk post security through through the airport, and I love walking C because it's it's just like you said, it's totally light, it's open. Even though there's lots of people through there, it doesn't feel like that. Good. Any other thoughts or reflections? Yeah. Yep. Cold as we go right. Yeah, that that's that's a big element of it. How fast you can get through. Yeah. It always feels like it's open to me. I have flown into mm-hmm. airports that you've been in and you just want a cup of coffee or something, and it feels like the whole place is shut down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The people that handle lost luggage are always really nice. <laughs> <laughs> What are you bringing and why are you losing so much luggage? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, these are all the things I hear. Um, uh, it's PDX is different because we have local art. We have local musicians playing live music to keep people relaxed when they come through the security process. Uh, we have local shops offering local food. Um, uh, we have a micro cinema. <laughs> um, and then there are the things that you want at every airport, right? It's clean. Um, but, uh, you know, a big part of that is it's easy to get through. I, you know, I often make the joke to people that w- working at the airport, you're treated as an a- ambassador for the airport, and your friends ask you, when do I really need to get to the airport, right? I'm flying out. When do I really need to get there? And we have standard texts we're supposed to tell people, right? If you're getting there, uh, if you're leaving on a domestic flight, get there two hours early. International, get there three hours early. And everyone you talk to goes, okay. (laughs) Knowing that that process is usually going to be much quicker. Um, And so, um, you know, that's part of the charm. I think, you know, you all hit it right on the head. I think another part of the charm is the customer service. We have a really robust customer service team um, that really focuses on the traveler experience. I would say that we have some of, if not the best TSA agents in the nation. I fly to other places and I will say it's the experience is not as friendly uh, as it is here. Um, and so we really work hard to cultivate our relationships with our partners in a way that I, I don't see that happening at other airports. Um, And so, uh, you know, when we talk to focus groups about these projects and they tell us all these things, the one theme that we hear is, you know, don't don't screw this up. Uh, And so uh, we are working on not screwing it up. But we also need to think about how do we make PDX bigger, but also make it easier to get through. One way we're doing this is we're looking at uh, creating rooms for passengers from an architectural perspective. So um, creating distinct rooms from ticketing to security to the moment you get to the gate. There are a lot of things competing for people's attention. And often travelers are saying to themselves, OK, I just need to get to the gate and I can relax. I just need to get to the gate and I can relax. So we are looking at ways to help guide people to get to the gate in an easier fashion than having to look up and look at a sign and you know, try and figure out where they're going. Uh, one way we're doing that, we're using uh, wood and uh, hard surfaces to direct people where to go. That same like follow the yellow brick road phenomenon. Don't worry, the carpet is still gonna be in the airport. Um, uh, we're also looking at Uh, creating views of the Pacific Northwest, encouraging views of the uh, environment, and also making it more open so you can see more throughout the airport. That's one thing that we don't currently have that we're working on. Um, Again, I think adds to that feeling of ease uh, when you move through. So the challenge we have here 
is um, when does the airport close? It doesn't. So how do you build a new terminal and particularly put on a brand new roof on the building when you've got 55,000 people going through every day? In fact, I get the reports. There's like yesterday we had like 65,000 people coming through the airport. So that's a lot of people coming through the airport every day. Um, so we have to figure out how we do this, not only in a safe manner, but in a convenient manner. So I'm gonna show you an image of what we're thinking of in terms of the terminal, kind of looking from a bird's eye view. So one thing I wanna point out in this picture, um, we are going to be bumping out the terminal to the west. This is west, this direction. We're gonna be bumping out the terminal 150 linear feet, which will add more room. The current concourse connector as you experience it is right about here. So it's gonna be back here. Um, we're going to work on these elements of the roof off-site and then bring them in on off-peak hours, 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. The roof that we are creating is going to be uh, an earthquake-resilient, seismically isolated roof, which apart from the obvious benefit there, um, and we, we talked a little bit about this, it's going to allow for more flexibility below. So one thing that we're seeing is that when, when, when we work on these master plan projects, we're trying to look ahead 20 years in the future. The problem is technology uh, eventually will hit an exponential growth rate. And there are things that we, we can't even consider. We didn't know about Uber and Lyft 20 years ago. We weren't thinking about kiosks 30 years ago, right? In fact, the exit that you experience now coming out of the post-security back to pre-security when you leave from a flight, um, you know, where Starbucks is on the south side, that used to be ticket counters, right? Those were never used. We never used them, and they were just sitting there empty. It was a real poor use of space. So we have to think of planning for the unexpected. And one way we do that is being able to create a roof that stands on its own so that we can make changes down here to accommodate for new ways that people travel. Uh, one challenge that um, I shared, I think, at the Gresham Rotary um, that we didn't see. So these new exits that you experience here and here, you know, you used to exit um, where the security checkpoints are, and it used to funnel you out into the um, Clock Tower Plaza, which is now called the, uh, oh, it's Clock Tower Plaza now, it used to be Oregon Market. Um, we moved those uh, checkpoints to make them automated and also looking forward towards this project. Anyone know what, uh, what an inadvertent issue was that we caused, apart from a little bit of uh, congestion over here and over here. What, what, what do you think changed? If you, if you had people coming through the, the market here in the past, and now they're not, it's not security. Exactly right, yeah. People used to come out from their flights, they would come into the uh, Clock Tower Plaza, and they'd be like, oh yeah, C.C. McKenzie, I get something for my spouse, or oh, I'm gonna stop off at Powell's, or I'm gonna stop off at Made in Oregon. Now it's out of sight, out of mind. They're coming out and they're like, okay, I just, I just need to get out of here. So we've seen sales go down a little bit. So creating an open structure like this will also allow us to um, have more module, um, uh, businesses that can be able to go up and go down depending on need and uh, grow also depending on demand. Um, you're still going to have a similar experience in terms of a checkpoint over here, a checkpoint over here, and you're still going to be able to connect to get to the other side, so don't worry about that. Um, but if everything goes to plan, we expect this to be finished 2025. 2026. So you're going to see some changes. And I, and I say that when you uh, know that your experience going through the airport is usually smooth and seamless, 
In a few years, when we're undergoing construction, please allow yourself enough time to get through the airport because we don't, we don't quite know what this is going to look like yet. It will have some impact. Um, a few more things to talk about before I open this up for uh, Q&A. Um, we're also looking at ways to um, better our environmental impact. A lot of people don't realize PDX was the first in the nation to install moving walkways with an auto start feature. Uh, that actually reduced energy savings, or actually re resulted in an energy savings of about 43%. We just completed um, a project on the baggage claim system, uh, which resulted in savings of about 4.5 million kilowatts a year. Um, our uh, HQ building is LEED Platinum certified. Our parking structure is LEED certified. So we, we put a lot of thought into these efforts. Um, so the question is, can you make the airport bigger and reduce energy use? And the answer is yes. Uh, you, you know, we have uh, simpler things like uh, all those uh, huge windows that let in a lot more natural light that reduces our need for artificial uh, light, but also things like um, Create a ground source heat pump. This isn't very sexy because this, this technology has been around for a while, but we're not currently using that at the airport. So being able to have something like this that will allow us to use the earth as a heat sink when it's hot and draw on the earth for warmth when it's cold will greatly re reduce our energy usage. We're also looking at other efforts as well. So this is our goal. We're increasing our airport size, but also trying to reduce our energy use by about 50%, and I think we're going to be able to do it. Okay, so we talked about a lot of projects. Questions? Not everyone at once. I know you're, you're all wowed. Yes? Pass the mic, huh? Uh, I'm Michael Patrick. This is my wife, Sue Hi, Piazza, Michael. Bucket List Travel Tours. So we're Hi. experienced travelers here. Exactly. It's good to meet you both. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. The same <laughs> with you. Oh, thanks. So um, as far as a, a, a hotel connected to the airport itself, the real estate probably doesn't allow itself to do it because we travel a lot. It's very convenient to have something where you don't leave the terminal. Um, right. Yeah, so is there, I uh, haven't heard anything like that. Um, obviously, we are we are constrained by space. Uh, you know, we don't have the benefit of like Salt Lake City, right? They can build a brand new airport next door and just move in, right? We don't have an ab overabundance. Right. We don't have an overabundance of space, so we've got to work with what we got, which is part of the reason why. You know, you, you mentioned earlier the return to terminal, right? So that first experience where you're used to returning to the terminal, it's super easy, it's super fast, and suddenly that closes down and you've got to go up to 80 seconds to make that U-turn. You're like, oh, this is adding 45 seconds to this commute back to the terminal. I'm upset about this. Um, but, but, <laughs> but the reason why we have to do that is because when we put in that new parking structure, that is going to infringe on the current um, uh, exit plaza, right? So next time you drive up to the airport, you'll see they're building a brand new exit plaza right there, right when the road kind of diverges and goes like, goes like this, right, right in there is a new exit plaza. And that's where people are going to exit from, which basically takes out the ability to come all the way around. We could, of course, build a tunnel underneath, but that the cost would be prohibitive. Jason, so. I think that you could rent tents. REI or Dix could probably could accommodate. You could do tents in the aisleways and rent them that way instead of a hotel room. Go, go, the, go the Portland way? Yeah. Port yeah, go, yeah. go the Portland, Portland motto. Sue from Bucket List Travels has a question. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'm curious, uh, two things. One, it's kind of not to do with this part of it, but any um, future, anything in the works for more international travel out of PDX? And then the second one is about the parking structure. I think you said there was going to be 2,600. 24. 2,400 more parking spots. Does that, in, and the rental car companies are going to be in there also? No, so the rent, so I think in total, I want to say it's 4,400 spots. And just for the public, it's 2,400. Okay. It's long term. And that's going to take how many years till it's done? A couple. Okay, a few. I'm just curious because I actually worked for Hertz Rent a Car back in yeah. the early 80s when they were building the first parking structure there. And by the time it was completed, it was outdated and we, they needed to build onto it. Has there been, 
look into the future of when this gets done and what we feel the next 10 years are going to be? Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, an, interesting, um, it's an interesting question because there, it's an interesting uh, problem to try and forecast, right? 20 years from now. So when you look at where the airport makes its revenue, it's rent from the airlines and parking, right? What's this going to look like 25 years from now when people are sending their cars home? I have no idea, right? Um, we know that this, the, the current parking structure um, should get us to about, mm, I want to say 2035. Uh, we know that, at least. Um, and, but that's not, that's not accommodating for however technology changes when it comes to autos. Um, but it, it is something that we're looking at and thinking about, like, how does this, how does this change? Um, the other piece about international travel, we, you know, we are always looking to diversify and add international service. Um, it's interesting because we are one of the smallest markets with both transatlantic and transpacific international, direct international service, and we're very proud of that. Um, but it, it, it is, um, it, it, a lot of work goes into securing those routes, right? Um, apart from demand, which airlines can often see, right? They know where we're all connecting to get to our ultimate destination. Um, sometimes it requires partnering with uh, local businesses like Intel or Nike and, you know, saying to them, hey, you're telling us you want direct flights to, to London. Well, we might be able to secure this with Delta, but you have to be able to guarantee that you're going to fill those flights, right? Um, so there's a lot of groundwork that goes on behind the scenes. Um, I know our team is still looking at adding additional flights. I haven't heard uh, anything that can be announced anytime soon, but um, it's something that we're continuing to look at. Larry has a question. Larry. Hey, Jason. Good to see you again. Yeah, Thanks you too. for coming out. Two questions, actually. Um, one is, you talked about the uh, other heat source, uh, power source. Will you be looking also at uh, solar panels? And We have solar panels right now on top of the seventh floor of the parking structure. Those panels, if you go up there, you'll see they... they kind of go the whole, the whole way of the parking structure right there. And those panels alone um, power the Nike store. Um, I don't know what it looks like in terms of the conversation, in terms of adding more solar. Um, I haven't been updated on that. Um, I know there are certain challenges related to the area. Um, but I'm sure that's something that we're, we've looked at. Okay. Yeah. Great. And, and the other question is, um, December is obviously a very busy time out at the airport. Um, so let's say this year, let's say from, oh, December 21st to January 4th, what could somebody expect uh, to see as far as construction? I'm just asking for a friend. <laughs> you can tell your friend. No. <laughs> um, you're going to still see uh, construction going on E, which won't really have any impact on your friend. Uh, you'll see um, work on the parking structure, which shouldn't have much impact. Um, the impact that will happen will be um, A, closing down, and B, closing down. And those passengers that not normally fly out of there will go to the end of C. So C will be a little bit busier. Uh, than normal, um, but those folks are moving to the end of C, which is somewhat open, more open. When I do my rounds, it's not as full. Um, those are probably the main things you're going to see at the end of this year. Councillor Widmark has one. Say hi to your friend, by the way. Yeah. So I have, I have yeah. two questions. One is, uh, and one's a compliment. The, when you reconfigured for Immigrations Customs uh, here a couple years ago, it really has improved coming through from an international flight mm -hmm. and it, are we looking at expanding that if we you know have additional uh, international flights coming in 
I, I haven't heard anything about expanding it. Um, you know, the new FIS uh, Federal Inspection Station um, for international flights. Uh, it was um, part of actually this PDX Next project. So the whole thing that kicked off the PDX Next suite of projects was the carpet replacement. Okay. Uh, and then... <laughs> Is it coming back? <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the FIS was, was worked on. So they had built that whole new... Um, uh, area to make it more seamless. So I haven't heard any um, rumblings about the need to expand that anytime soon, um, but I know that it has been a, a great benefit to international travelers. And it's, as a customer, it's yeah. very beneficial. Yeah. The other question I have, and I know you didn't talk about your two other airports, any look at expansion on either of those airports uh, uh, for the region? Yeah, so um, Troutdale Airport, currently undergoing uh, environmental assessment. Um, we are reconfiguring the runway out there. Um, it is going to be 4,500 feet, and um, we are going to consolidate our uh, aviation uses to the south side. Um, so there's probably going to be more opportunity for industrial out there. Um, in terms of Hillsborough Airport, we just completed a, a master plan process recently um, uh, where we looked at the role of the airport. Uh, community members were saying, Man, we would really love to have commercial service to bypass 26 and go straight to PDX. Um, but uh, we're, we're too close in proximity to the airport, so it just it, it wouldn't be viable. So it's going to remain in its position as a general reliever airport for PDX. Um, but in terms of changes, um, yeah, there's going to be there's going to be some the, the terminal building will needs to be updated, and that will happen probably I don't know, six or seven years from now. And then there's going to be more opportunities along Cornell, um, some synergies with the uh, fairgrounds and other opportunities with restaurants and local options as well. Does that answer your question? Councilor Eccles okay. has a question. Thank you. Uh, similar uh, to Michael Patrick's question, I used to run a national organization, so my board was spread out around the country, mm -hmm. and we would look to where we could find airports that would have conference room space, meeting space, mm -hmm. And, and that's where we would go. Is there any um, plans to include that? That is, that is a great question. Uh, the answer to that is a yes, I believe so. Um, that is something that our team was concerned about too, right? Okay, you get good. rid of all this, right? There's, we, we, we have meetings, people have meetings and they need to have a conference center. Um, I think what's going to happen, don't, don't quote me on this, um, so part of the new parking structure, there's going to be a new rental car center. Um, and uh, we're actually moving our port police over there. We're moving our comm center over there. Um, I'm not sure if the uh, new uh, rooms are going to be located there or if they're actually going to be worked in to this design. So I need to go back to my team and ask them. That, that's a really great question. Um, so keep an eye out for that. I can give you my card, and we can touch base if you want to. Okay, Sherry has a question, and sure. then I'll go over to whoever raised okay. their hand. Great. A few, a few questions. So being a banker, I always think about the economic impact. Um, what is the cost of these five projects? And then how many people, do we know how many people will be employed on those projects? And then after the expansion, how many um, jobs will be created or added? So uh, in told, it's about a $2 billion investment for these projects. Um, in terms of jobs, I think it equates to about uh, 1,250 um, jobs. Um, we're also working with a number of contractors on the project. Um, I'm not quite sure what the long-term uh, impact looks like um, and how that changes. All I know is in terms of what this project looks like for jobs, um, and it's good. Jason, I have a question as I'm heading over this way to Karen. Um, we've got this little thing in 2021, the first week of August, called the World Games um, oh, happening yeah. in Eugene. Yeah. So is the airport going to be shut down during all of the international travel? Yeah, we're just going to close our doors yeah, for a couple okay. weeks. So, no big deal. So right. what's the plan? We're going to move everyone out to Terminal 2. It'll be great. Okay, or, or to Troutdale. <laughs> Bring him to Troutdale, and we'll <laughs> unload him there. So... So seriously, what, what will it look like our team, when our, our world-class yeah. athletes are in town? Our, our team are um, 
uh, we have known about this for quite some time. Uh, they are currently still working on their plan to be able to accommodate because we know it's going to equate to a lot more people coming through. Um, I've heard from people, you've got to think about buses, you've got to think about all the people coming up to the terminal. So our, our, uh, our team is looking at that and they're devising a, uh, a strategy to make sure that we can accommodate for for it. So it's not it's not unbeknownst to us. So are government types looking at this or entrepreneurs looking at the problem? I mean our port our port our port folks. Okay, your yeah. port folks? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well I just it was yes. like a little jab, but yeah. it's it is a big deal. Yeah. Um, and it'll be not just the first week of August, but several weeks ahead of time and several weeks afterwards. So right. it's a full month of yeah. of unconstruction mentality. So Karen has a question. I don't know if you touched base on this, but funding, how is it this expansion being funded and is it gonna impact our pocketbook? Or are we gonna be paying more for parking and other things as well? Uh, it's the FAA and the airlines. Um, whether you know it or not, whenever you fly into, um, well, whenever you buy a ticket anywhere, uh, you have a fee and that fee goes to improvements for airports all throughout the nation. So. Um, it's not the taxpayer, it's the traveler, and that ultimately equates to the airlines and the FAA uh, fronting the bill for it. Yeah. Good answer. Any other questions? Oh, we've got two more here. I don't think I know you. My name is Lynn, I'm the CEO of the chamber, and who are you? Heather, I'm Jason. Okay, Northwest Academy, Heather. Are you a member of our chamber? I'm teasing, I know, I'm just kidding. She has a question. Okay, so as a mom of four kids, yeah. I'm curious if you guys have considered doing um, non-gender specific bathrooms, like family bathrooms, that a kind lot, of stuff. A because... lot of conversation has gone into that. Okay. Yes. Because and... I have like, I know a lot of my friends have like special needs children, yep. and you can't take, a, it, yeah. Yep. So yep. We are, we are, we're definitely working on that, having family bathrooms, having... Uh, non-specific bathrooms for people. That's called potty talk. That's the <laughs> meeting. It's a, it's a potty talk. Okay. I love that. Lori, were, were you the one that raised your hand? So I don't understand the roof. It sounds brilliant, but I don't get it. Is uh -huh. it like on stilts or what? You said you're asking free, a non-engineer, right? You're asking a non-engineer to explain it. Um, all I know is that there are. Um, so there are. Uh, Japan has kind of. Um, uh, uh, really perfected this technique with having isolated floors and roofs. They're on like, um, it's almost like they're on balls that move. So they, the, so the, uh, in terms of what it looks like for how it's put up there, I, I've, I have no idea. It's a great question. I don't know. All I know is it's, it's I, I could give you my card if you want to reach out to our, uh, I can connect you with our engineering folks. Yeah, then I'd get an engineering expert. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's either one or the other. I just wanted a visual. I wanted to know if it's like floating or if it's, what it's doing out there. It's, f it's floating within the realm of physics. Okay. <laughs> You're satisfied. Wow, that's great. <laughs> Woo! Non-engineering answer. For the win. Um, your new best friend, Dean from PGE, Hi, has Dean. a question. Who, who is the uh, primary architect of that project and maybe some of the, t the, the, the project team, the big vendors, who are they? Oh my gosh, the, I think it's ZGF. I believe so. They're the ones that created this structure out there that people have come to love. Um, and then in terms of the project, we have Hoffman out there, uh, Skanska, um, you know, our regular, our regular crew working on it. So it sounds like they got somebody local after they were able to get the airport engineered. Is that right? Ms. Hoffman is. Okay, you have another question. It's going to cost you. It always does. <laughs> so uh, since we have a little bit of time left, uh, not to change the subject, but I have this baseball thing here on there. And I, yeah, who and, did that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lynn and Aaron is huge in the baseball, and we had a question for She was, I'm, I'm her advocate for her, so Aaron wants to know about baseball. Yeah. Right. So is everyone familiar with what we're talking about here? Right. So we have four terminals. 
uh, aptly named two, four, five, and six. Um, three uh, was lost at the um, uh, inception of uh, the St. John's Bridge. Um, one still exists, but it's not in our portfolio. So two, Terminal Two is closer to the Pearl. Um, and in the past, it has been used as a, what we call a, a, a break bulk facility. So there's different types of cargo. Um, and it has largely been um, underutilized the last few years. The main action for our terminals is 456. Um, and recently, uh, last year, we were approached by a group, the Portland Diamond Project, a uh, group of um, investors looking to bring Major League Baseball to the area. Um, and they had identified three different areas as possible locations for a new uh, baseball stadium. Uh, terminal 2 being one of them. And ultimately, they selected Terminal 2 as their first choice. Um, they engaged the port in a due diligence process um, that was supposed to be up last month. Uh, and they said to us, we need a little bit more time. And we said, sure, if you pay us. Um, and so they are still, they've extended the due diligence process by about six months. Um, and awarding the port $37,500 every month to do so. Um, so it's great for us for a terminal that hasn't seen a lot of action. Um, <clears throat> but they have, uh, they have a number of challenges to overcome. Um, the area is not, it's zoned industrial. It's not, it's not zoned for um, a baseball park. So they have to figure that part out transportation. So there are a lot of elements that still need to be figured out. Um, it's looking more of a long shot, but it's still possible. You have a lot of people, uh, part of that group, that are um, really excited to see baseball come to Portland. So um, it's, a, it's, it's a win for us if it happens. Um, we, I can tell you, we, this has been a, a, an eye-opening opportunity for us, um, really kind of embracing the reality that we're not going to see um, Terminal 2 as a, we, we just don't see it as a marine terminal anymore. Um, so what that ultimately ends up being, whether it's a future uh, baseball stadium or not, still remains to be seen. So I don't have any additional insider knowledge uh, that I can share apart from they're still working on it. Um, and it could happen, but it feels more of a long shot. You're doing great with all the answers and all our questions. Thanks, Lynn. Now, I appreciate one... how supportive you are. <laughs> I do. It's great. These guys are a great group. And looking toward the future, uh, you said 2025 when it's going to be done. Uh, it's going to have more terminals. Uh, uh, it's going to have more traffic. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, heavily into the ecology and uh, car uh, reduction of carbon. Uh, and so how is PDX addressing that uh, with this, with, you know, they're saying we're supposed to be green by 2040, uh, uh, and, well, planes <laughs> use a lot of fuel, uh, yeah. but also the ground support equipment and people movers and things like that. Uh, uh, right. How is that being addressed? It's a good question. Um, uh, I was telling my new friend Dean here. Uh, we were Before you answer that question, yes. there is a plan to remove all planes, and we're going to go to Hawaii by train. And so maybe it's just going to take care of itself. It's just. <laughs> yeah, that the Tesla electric boat. Yeah. So did that help Hyper you out, Jason? Hyperloop, right there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, obviously. Um, uh, people are continuing to travel. It's an important part of our uh, economy. Um, uh, you know, I, I think you bring up a, a, an important point in that it is something we have to consider because air traffic is uh, it is a contributor to um, greenhouse gases. Um, uh, we were talking about how planes have become more efficient um, uh, in loading. So. You have all experienced this where, you know, 10 years ago you could sit down and not have someone sit next to you, and now those planes are pretty full. Um, uh, 
Um, so that is one s very small measure in combating this issue. Um, I know that um, our executive director, Chris Robinhold, is, um, uh, has started to look at this as a problem um, in terms of, yeah, you're exactly right, what do we do? I don't know what the answer is because we continue to have demand. Um, obviously, there's technological advances, there's offsets. Um, but people still are going to want to travel. Yeah, a lot of airports uh, are highly restrained, and uh, I know that there have been electrification projects in, in multiple airports, and they can't do it because of the, because the infrastructure isn't there. Yeah. So PGE, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 will, will there, yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, the ground support equipment uh, you, uh, uses a lot of fuel, uh, and uh, so uh, to try to help in that area uh, as you're moving forward. Just yeah. yeah, it's good. They become so efficient, my bags don't make it on the plane <laughs> on a regular That's basis. That's why you're talking to the so, lost. Yeah, there you go. Lost baggage Question? room. Uh, yes, can you please tell the airlines to stop charging me for my bags, please? <laughs> okay, what's your name? <laughs> okay. You know, the Southwest, um, it, you know who our main carrier is out at the airport, right? Alaska and Horizon. They make up about 40% of our traffic, more than that. And then you have Southwest, and combined, it's almost about 60%. Well, Southwest and Alaska are on the south side of the airport, and Southwest has their bags fly free project, or, you know, motto. That puts a major strain on the baggage claim system. So this, this is part of the impetus of trying to move them to the other side to balance things out. OK, we've got time for two more questions. Karen's first. So with the future in AI, is there anything new and techy in the airport? And is the airplanes going to change too? Or are they going to look different as well? Uh, to features? answer your latter question, I've seen some really, I don't know if you've read the news, I've seen some really scary pictures of some new designs of, of planes where like people are actually in the wings. They're, they're, they're working on this new design right now. Uh, it's going to be a long time in the future. Um, in terms of technological advances, our group is actually working with the TSA to create a um, uh, a wait time indicator for the um, security checkpoint so people know. So kind of make it more like Disneyland. And then um, I know that, I know, <laughs> fast pass, right? <laughs> yeah, you have to get there two hours early and then, yeah. Um, and, but I also know the TSA is, uh, they're working on, uh, they're piloting some projects to help move people through faster. You know, we have a lot more technology at our fingertips, and, you know, we're going to get to the place where there's going to be no reason to stand in a line and wait to go through security. Um, and they're working on that. You can read some interesting articles right now of, like, being able to scan people as they're walking up to the security area, so all they have to do is put their bag down and walk right through. This sounds like four questions. She said two. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the, where, the, where the planes don't have windows, they just show you what you're seeing. I, I have heard about that. I, that's, a, that's an airline thing. I think that might freak people out. Um, what, was your, what was your third question? Your third, there was a third question there. I, facial recognition. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that I know that um, you walk into the airport, there are cameras everywhere. Um, I know there are conversations right now about privacy and what kind of data is appropriate to be able to garner or not. I'm, I'm sure that we are going to see those technologies employed in a more substantive way for the traveler, um, not too far from now, but um, uh, in the short term. Facial recognition? I believe so. I, I, um, I know that uh, LAX has been piloting um, some 
projects for airlines where they use facial recognition to load onto the plane. Um, but again, that's the airline taking the lead, not, say, the um, Port Authority. Right. How many of you enjoy Jason so much you'd like to have him back? Thanks. So are you busy in July? We've got an opening in July. Yes, I am. Um, Jason, I want to thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate yeah. you being My here. My pleasure. Yeah, this is great. You'll yeah. come back, right? Yes. We'll Probably have... not in July. <laughs> but I will. Okay. Yeah. Lynn, have to come back as one of those actor roles. Yeah, okay. I'll do an interpretive dance of, the, of this. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh an interpretive dance. All right, well, uh, I'll stick around if you have any questions or if you need my card to reach out to me. Yeah, thanks. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Jason, do you break dance? Uh, break my back dance. <laughs> the Chamber is sponsoring the Breaking on Main for the Art Festival, and I just wonder if maybe you'd like to champion a team um, to represent the Chamber. I will consider that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was really good. A lot of information. I'm so glad that you all got to, t got to hear that. Um, and if you want to hear him again or hear your questions again the replay is out on the desk out there i want to again thank dean funk with portland general electric thank you dean third time there you go and sherry henson sherry henson with columbia bank thank you for being a sponsor gresham barlow school district and metro east community media i'm not sure if any of you know or um, maybe you do but at the end of the month marty jones the ceo is leaving metro east that will not stop keith from being here or monica for for answering our questions but if you want to send marty a little thank you note for all the hard work that he's done with that group a couple of things a couple of uh, housekeeping things Hot off the press, just arrived day before yesterday, and I, I dog-eared this page because I was going to talk about Dr. Pereira. We did a, a special article on the three local superintendents. The article is fascinating, and it, you'll get to know our three superintendents very well by reading the article. This is in the mail, or will be in the mail if you're a chamber member, and you can pick up extra copies at the chamber anytime you'd like. Um, July 16th is our next BLT, and we were going to have the legislators come and give us a wrap-up, and nobody can come. Um, they're either on vacation, uh, visiting fathers out of town in uh, Berlin, etc., or at conference. Two of them are at the same conference. So they can't come on Tuesday, but two days later, they are available, because most of them have, will be back in town, for EMI, for East Metro Economic Alliance um, early morning wrap-up. So if you want to hear your legislators, please come to that. It's a morning. You can get in touch with me, and I can send you the link so that you can come see that wrap-up. Uh, is it at Heidi's? Again, is that Heidi's? Probably 7, 7.30. Legislators are always really sharp that early in the morning. Um, a couple of other dates I'd like to remind you of. The golf tournament, a very fun Friday um, going right into the weekend. is Our chamber golf tournament is July 26th. There are sign-up flyers out on the registration table. If you don't know how to play golf, you'll fit in. Nobody will notice. So just come on and do that. Uh, two months after that, we have Pete Blank from Disney University. Lessons from the Mouse House, that's our business summit. I'm so looking forward to that. 8.30 directory, July 26th, October 17th. And I need somebody to clean my windows. So thank you very much for coming today. Appreciate you being here. <laughs>